Today, like I said, it is Transformation Tuesday, and we have the incredibly talented A.V. Peterson. A.V. is a Redken artist, tear sheet artist. She's a manager, a coach, an education director, a head stylist at Octagon Salon in Illinois. She's an editorial and celebrity stylist. She's had her work publicized in a lot of travel or sorry, trade magazines. And she's also had the privilege to work at Fashion Week across the globe. So you are really going to have a great time learning from her. She's an amazing educator. Please welcome our friend, A.V. Peters. Hi, A.V. Hi, how are you guys? Good, how are you? Good, good. I'm excited to be here. And we are excited to have you. Yeah, it's going to be so good. Well, um, have some fun. I'm going to turn you loose and I'll pop back in with questions as they come up. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All right, everyone. How are you guys doing out there? Give me a woo woo. Um, I just want to share with you some looks that I've done. Um, and one of the looks that I'm going to share with you today is on my daughter, Erica. And this is a, lot, um, a look that we've done with braids and texture. Um, and some accessorizing, you know, the look. So if you can see that really good, take a look. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, so I love texture and I'm so excited to share. And I'm gonna bring her on and we're gonna get started right now. Okay, so Erica, come on in. Oh, and check out my dolls really quick. Let me, let me introduce you to them. This one is uh, Maggie. <laughs> and this one is Nellie. And this one here is Aaliyah. So these are my friends that are hanging out with me. So we did a little bit of accessorizing. We did some curly hair texturizing and um, some diffusing with Sam's blow dryer and his diffuser. And um, so we just had a lot of fun. <laughs> so I'm gonna move, on, move them over and I'm gonna bring Erica on. Okay. All right, come on, Erica. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> So real quick, what I'm going to share with you is a little bit of what we did um, to get started. I did two braids right now and through her top. Um, I'm going to spin her around really quick. And so we did two braids coming back. And then we added a little cord to it, a little silver cord for some accessory. And we're, we diffused a little bit of her back. But I'm going to do a little bit more and I'll share with you how we did that and why and um, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna start out with her braid right in through the top. Right now you see so many braids that are in and texture and curly hair and I, you know, I'm loving curly hair. Um, I'm gonna add, let me, let me grab, hang on one second, I wanna grab my comb here. And I'm gonna give that to Erica who's gonna also- uh, I'm a helper. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my rat tail comb from Sam and that way it's great because it just, it's able to section section out my um, my partings. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a parting that's diagonal forward, uh, so that way I have a diagonal uh, braid coming through the back. So that's where I made my parting. On the front, I just did a mohawk section going down the middle, and then again, I did a diagonal forward section on my uh, left side here, and now I'm gonna start on my next side. So here's my, I'm gonna, Bring it a little bit close so I can braid so that way you can see that. So let's take a look here. Okay. Braiding is fun. And you know what? Some of you guys probably, like maybe some people are not good at braiding and it's okay because you could do so many looks now. Like you could um, use a twist braid, you can do the two strand braid, um, a French braid, you know, or the Dutch braid. So whichever you like, whether you want it on top or underneath, it's just preference on what you like. Okay, so it's taking a section, I'm taking a slice from the one side, bringing it underneath, I'm taking a section from the other side here, and then going underneath with it, but it's constant. Um, just taking sections from each side. If you wanted to take sections from one side, you could. But if you if you want to take it from both sides, that's all right too. 
Hey, Avi, for the, those of us that aren't um, real fantastic at braiding, can you give us a, a kind of like a detailed walkthrough of where you're taking those sections, where you're placing them into the braid? Because um, I notice even too, you're kind of holding with your hands over top versus like an underneath. Can uh -huh. you just talk about some of those little details for us? Because I'm not a great braider. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's like um, when you braid, it's like you could come in from underneath. Like, let me show you. Like the way I was taught was to take it from the top, but you also can do under, you can also take the section from underneath. Um, but when you're taking them from the top, and so I used to always feel bad, like, wait, I'm braiding with my hands on the top. But um, it's just different. And as long as you're braiding, it works. But let's walk through it. So I have my three sections. Okay, so the one on the left is going underneath and I'm grabbing it with my a middle finger and I'm holding it to the side. Okay, and then I'm pinching that top piece with my fingers there. Then I'm taking a slice here from the left side and sliding it to my hands. Then I'm taking, I'm pinching it with my two fingers and from underneath, I'm bringing that left side right into the top. And then I'm gonna take from the right, and I know the cameras are different, so right, left, I hope I'm talking right. <laughs> so I'm gonna pinch that with my two fingers here, grabbing from the middle and pulling it over to the, my next side. Pinching that middle section, I'm slicing the next piece, bringing it, feeding it to the neck, the hair that was pinched already. And then I'm pulling it over to the opposite side. Can you see that well? And then again, I'm gonna feed it to the right, holding it in my hand here. So, and then I'm gonna go underneath, pulling it over top and pinching. And then we're gonna take another slice. I know it's hard to see, let's see if you can get there. I'm gonna have Erica bend her head a little bit more. She might have a little neck pain later <laughs> on. <laughs> but we're gonna work this, okay? So grabbing it with my two, with my left hand, pushing it over with my right. And one of the girls, I actually, she was had a hard time braiding, and we walked, I walked her through this and we did it together, and then she became a braider. So it was really cool because now she braids and she was so excited. And that was Jennifer. <laughs> Again, so. Here's our right, it's in my right hand. I'm gonna pinch that, go underneath, and then we're gonna grab that top section. I'm gonna put it into my two fingers. I'm gonna take them, take it back on my left side. So you see you've got two sections here, and I'm gonna pinch them over to the, my left hand. And I'm gonna push my right and twist it right underneath. Okay, so then we come back through, take a section here, hook it to the other, with, the, with, with my other side there. Okay, take my left side and I'm gonna pull it over to the right, pushing the hair right on top. And then grabbing a section, slicing it through that top area. and pinching that there. Then we're gonna take it again, tuck it through. So you see I'm going underneath, pinching the, my first two fingers, grabbing a section from underneath. I'll turn it a little bit this way. And then we're going to hold that section there. So you see I have two sections. So it's a piece from my last section and a, my new section. I'm holding it in my right hand, taking the next section and pushing it underneath and then grabbing it with my right hand. So it's a constant under, over, under, over. Again, taking a slice, pinching it in my two, into my right hand, pulling this section over. And you can see I have one of the, my old section and my new section, okay? And then tucking it underneath. And you can do it, like I said, you can do it on top or underneath. By doing this Dutch braid, the hair lands on top. 
and it gives it um, a little bit more texture in through the top so you can see the braid. If your hair is very fine, then I would do it underneath because it's gonna be a really skinny braid. But we've added extensions to her hair before, so that way she would get a little bit more volume when I wanted a bigger braid. Does that help a little bit, Andrew? <laughs> For sure, yeah. I mean, all the little details of how it gets handed in and out and all those little little pieces, that, that helps a lot. Thank you. Yeah. So then we come through. And then she has their braid right in through here. So then she has these three braids that connect. So do you want me to show them how it would look if we went underneath? If you have time to show the contrast of it, sure. Yeah, so that way you can see a little bit different. So I'm going to take this out because we got a little time. Let's see. Because it'll be fun. That way you can kind of see the difference of the two. And braiding, I love braiding. So braiding is fun and it's, it's pretty fast. So it's, it's uh, I enjoy it. Okay, so if we were going, um, let's take a look here. If we wanted to go underneath, then you would take your hands, again, you know, diagonal forward, so you can have an angle coming down. And then you take your three sections, and then you would feed it. You go underneath. Okay, now I'm going to tilt her back this way a little bit, right? So you'll go underneath. Like you're going to start off with a braid. I'm so used to doing them underneath, I mean over. Okay, so then you come and you take a slice and then you pull it underneath. Then you take another slice from the opposite side, right? And then you go underneath. Let's take, so you take another slice and you're feeding it. Oh, it's getting. So it comes underneath. So everything for your French braid, everything goes underneath. And for your, um, your Dutch braid, everything goes on top. So that way, when you do a French braid, everything is flatter. And it just depends on the texture here. It depends what you're looking for, okay? So they, they work good, they all work good. It just depends what, you're, what you want in your creation. So that way it's like a flatter look versus the bold, stronger look. And you get that flatter look, okay? But I'm going to go back and I'm going to do, and you can also, well, real quick too, you can also do a twist braid too, because if you don't, if you can't braid or French braid, you could also do twists. And then you could come through and then you just take sections and you can twist. So you take a section, pull it over, twist. Take a section, pull it over, twist. So then she gets some twists in there as well. Thank you, Erica, for being a good model. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> and then you twist. It's always good to have a really good house model. Yes! <laughs> that way they let you do what you want. That's right. <laughs> So you see, so you can twist, you can do a French braid inside, you can do a Dutch braid on the outside. You know what, you can also do knots. So that's even another look that you could do because um, again, they look like braids too. So you could just go ahead and knot the hair. So just like if you were taking a knot, so let's see. 
Um, I'm going to have you turn to the right a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So you see, so you'll just take, you can also take a section from each side and then continue to knot the hair. And it's just like you're doing knots. And with her having her curly hair, I'm making her hair grow so you can see her little curly hair grow. <laughs> With this humidity, we've had so much rain here. So the minute we curl our hair with a curling iron, we go outside, we come back in, and we got puffy hair. <laughs> so these knots are really cool. So I'm taking a section from one side, okay? I'm taking a section from the opposite side. I have two strands, crossing them over. and bring it right into the, my little loop and knotting it. So you see she has the knots. Can you see the knots? Very cool. Yeah. Um, great question from Barbara Davis Wilkes Aliota. Yeah. Uh, she's asking, would you lay the baby hair down? And you know, that kind of, that's a great question because I think a lot of times when we're braiding and stuff, we do have those little pieces that pop through. So yeah. any tips for working with those little hairs that tend to pop through? Or... Yes. What we're going to do is once I'm done uh, braiding it, I'm going to go back and I'm going to lay these down. And so we're going to lay, lay them flat, just like we laid um, this side over here. So I'll show you how to do that and we'll lay them down. We'll get them edges down. <laughs> But that is fun. So, so take a look at that. So you see how you have minus her little edges because they will be flat. But see how you got the knots in there? So you could do Dutch braid. You could do a French braid. You could do twist. You could do knots. You can create whatever you want, you know, and just have some fun with it. But it's like it's so, I love doing it and just thinking of things, mixing them together. But it's, it's awesome. So I'm going to take this out and I'm going to go ahead with uh, our French braid, uh, our Dutch braid. And that way uh, we establish that and it's going to be a little uniformed. And I'm going to show you how I added the cord to it. And then we'll lay these down for you. But you see, as you mess with the textured curly hair, it starts growing. <laughs> okay. Okay. So again, diagonal forward, okay? Love this comb because you get like a nice straight line. So I love Sam's comb for sectioning. All right, so your three strands. I want you to see really, really well. I'm gonna take a section from my left, pushing it off underneath, taking a section from my right side, Following through. Okay. And when with when your hands are against her head, you know, your 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 client's head, it makes it tighter. You know, so if I had my hands farther away, it's gonna be a looser braid. But when I have them closer to her head, it's tighter. And if I pull, yeah. <laughs> it's tight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will be tight. And her eyes might come back a little bit, but you know it's going to stay all night long. <laughs> so no worries. So a constant uh, feeding the hair through. And like I said, with you taking a section from the top and on each side, you're going to get, you know, your a little bit of sectioning on each side. If you wanted to take it and just feed it from one side, you could, and that'd be a little smoother. It would lower your braid closer to her hairline if I just fed it to one side. So it depends just what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So we come in, I'm pushing it underneath, grabbing it with my middle finger, pinching it with my first two fingers, taking a section, tucking it underneath and pinching it with my left hand, okay?
I hope you guys can do a lot of breathing. <laughs> we can um, braid, twist, knots. There's so it's so fun. You can do so many different things, and and you choose what you want to do and what works. Because now you know everything. Everything is in. All right, and then you're going to have your little baby hairs down in the back which there's no worries because we all, you know, if you wanted to lay these little hairs down in the back, you could lay them down too. I'll put a little edging cream on them and I'll smooth them out. If you would like, if you want to do that too, you could do that or you could leave them. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm going to do is section this. I'm going to secure my back. Um, band. I'm going to use, um, can I have that? Here, Crystal Tech. So I'm going to use this Crystal Tech. Okay. And you see it's stretchy. It's from Tear Sheet, uh, Tear Sheet Crystal Tech with two grip pins. And I put it on each end so that way I'm able to wrap it around uh, Erica's, uh, her ponytail. So I'm going to uh, Put it in the base of her neck, in the base of her head, and I'm going to take this and wrap it right around her ponytail. And by me doing that, I'm, I'm not using an elastic, and if I used an elastic, I would disturb the curls that she has in the bottom. So I don't want to disturb the curls that are in the bottom, so then I'm just wrapping this cord right around. And I'm wrapping it tight so that her uh, ponytail braid just stays tightly down. Now with the back end of the hairpin, I'm going to secure that right in the back of her head, the back of the nape, and put it right through. So see? And it's tight. Okay? And then what you could do, let's just say you didn't want to use any cord. What you could do is just take the strand of her hair, take a section, and you could wrap that right around her curl if you would like, you know, her ponytail. And you could use her own hair. So you see, and then you can just rouge that out. Okay, or we can go all the way down with the braid too. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use the cord for a little bit of fun. Okay, so what I did... is I have this cord. So um, I have a lot of like fun little clips and cords and yarn. So it's like, get your stuff, like get cords, get yarn, you know, play with it and add to it. It just makes it a lot of fun, you know? So that way you can accessorize the hair because you're seeing all the accessories. They were in before, but they're in again. So what I did is I made a little noose and then I went ahead and I took the, my hair, my uh, grip pin and I put it right through it and just anchored it on there. Okay. So it's like a, like your sewing needle. And then what I did is I just popped it right in the back here. Okay. So underneath, so you just hide that little piece. And then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and wrap my cord right around her hair. And depending, you can cut the cord however long you want it. Um, you can have you know it really long so it comes down farther. You can have it shorter um, if you just want that little bit. It just depends what you're looking for. So this is fun. So again, depending on what you want. I did a girl where I used this uh, the cord, and I actually used um, silver and red, and I did a ponytail uh, on the top of her head, and it came straight up because my cord was super long, and I just kept wrapping and wrapping and wrapping, and her tail was like, it was super long and sticking out, <laughs> but it was fun. It was like a cool look. Just something different. I like this because it, I feel like it's very approachable. 
Um, yeah. you know, there's a simplicity to it. It's not this, you know, complicated pattern or anything, but the accessorizing yeah. really makes it stand out. It's like, oh, okay, that took it from, oh, that's a nice three strand or a nice braid style mm -hmm. to, whoa, this really stands out. Yeah. And I was looking just to do something fun for her. Um, and that way she could wear uh, and go out in. Because you're right. It's, it's just by, by you accessorizing, it's, you know, it gives it more. You know what it's like? It's like your little black dress for us women, you know. <laughs> and we always say, you know, that little black, black dress, that looks basic. But then once you accessorize it with, with your jewelry, your heels, your hair, then that makes it more. So it's the same thing with hair. Maybe it's, yeah, it's just a three-strand braid, but once you start accessorizing and adding extra to it, that's when you start creating something fun. And you get more of the look. And I bought, when I got this cord, I bought so much. I bought yarn and I bought like a harder cord and just to play with it and see what I liked the best. And so now I'm, I'm wrapping it back up the strand so that way I can then just clip it. And so I'll, be, I'll clip a little higher. So I'm going to take um, a grip pin and I'm just going to place it right in the back here. See? So you have, so I have them all three separate, but what I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring them all together. So I'm going to take, um, my three inch pin and I'm just going to bring them all together and just kind of weave it in the hair. And I'm gonna do it another one on the other side and then just kind of weave it in there. So that way they come closer together, okay? So with that, on, on your braids, if you want these braids to be bigger, um, rouge them out. You know, so you see how I'm just like, just massage it out so you get a little bit more fullness to the braid. And it makes the braid thicker. And like I said before, I used extensions and I added extensions to her braids to have, so they become fatter. And it's, it's a lot of fun because you can play with it. You could make, keep this one skinny. You could keep these ones, you can make these ones larger and make them fuller. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. And you just, again, just come in and massage it out so that it becomes bigger. And it's a lot of fun. So just depending. And then when they have color and highlights, that it just makes it a little bit more. Because you see the dimension. Yeah. So see? She might tell me she wants color done. We'll see. <laughs> After this, no. <none. laughs> the grown-in look is in style right yeah. now. <laughs> With our balayage. <laughs> but for real, I, I love the contrast of it. I like the dark base, and it, the, the braid shows up so nice. It, it mm -hmm. becomes really visually, it, it stands out. Yeah, because sometimes if the hair is so light, you don't you don't notice all the the dimension. So it is nice when you have some some regrowth. <laughs> so that looks really good. Yeah, so you can see that. So then what I went ahead and did. So I um I we put in the three braids, and then what we did is we're going to use um my Sanvia dryer, and this is the Vision blow dryer. I'm gonna scoot you away a little bit, Erica. Um. So this Vision Blow Dryer is really, really nice. It's light, it's not heavy. You know, we have uh, our cool button, and then we have the heat, depending on how much heat we want, high, low, but it's great, it's very, very light, and easy to put on. And I love this, so this is one of my favorite dryers, along with this Ionic. <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna diffuse the back so you can kinda see, and you just, the thing with curly hair is you don't wanna keep touching, 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 because as you touch like that, the hair becomes frizzy. With her hair, I did rouge it so it became a little bit more fuller, um, but it was made to be frizzy, okay? It just didn't become frizzy. I did that, okay? So that's the difference. Doing it and doing it on purpose and it, and then you doing it because you, you touched it too much, right? So I'm gonna keep it on low so you can hear me. 
And what I would do is just put the hair right in my bowl and diffuse that. Okay. And that's how I would be drying her. I would just be, um, I would just hold it there and let everything just dry right in its place. Okay. So then from here, I went ahead and um, let's just say you style your, you do this look and Let's just say that some of her pieces are straighter um, and you need to add some extra curl to it. Then what you do is you take your pencil iron, okay? And I'm a righty, so usually I'd hold it like this, but I want you to see it well, so I'm gonna hold it with my left hand and open it up. So open it up, okay, because this is where I'm gonna sell. You're gonna take a strand of hair and you're just gonna wrap it around, okay? and just wrap it around like your wand, hold it, and you're gonna slide it off. So that way you get them extra curls, okay? So whenever you have that loose piece that's like a little bit more, uh, it's like straight and you wanna add some curl to it, just grab your little wand iron, grab your, um, your pencil iron and then just slide it out. And you can see the curls that it created right in there. And you can do that throughout the hair. And that way, you know, if someone does have uh, more of a, a frizzier texture, then you can go in with your iron. I'm gonna spin you a little bit, Erica, so they can see. You can just wrap it around there. Okay? And that way you get a little hold and you get a little softer curl. So I could curl her whole head like this, okay? Or I could just do sections. It doesn't even have to be her whole head. And if you wanted larger curls, let's just say you wanted larger curls, uh, then I would go in with my, my Sambia um, wand. Now, I'm gonna show you that. This is Sammy's iron, and I use this, actually on my hair. <laughs> And what I love about this, this is actually my favorite iron. And not just because it's Sam's, but I love the barrel because it's longer. Um, so that was my favorite. I love the, it's like three different heating settings, low, medium, high. I love that. And when you push it, if you look, I can take it off. And that was like a, a winner for me. So then when I go to use my, for my curls, and because I have a long barrel and I have long hair, it's great because you can just bring it down and wrap it. Okay? So if you wanted bigger curls, boom, here you go. And then you create a larger curl. So it doesn't all have to be on uh, the spiraled hair like Erica's. It just depends what you got. And let's just say you wanted to use Erica's hair because you're going to take her from me and use her as your model. <laughs> well, you could. But you could use, I could recurl her hair and I could make all of this become bigger curls. So it's just, what do you want? You know, what are you looking for for that day? What are you looking for your editorial shoot? You know, or for your, for your, um, you know, for one of your brides or someone who's going out, you know, your choice. And you can mix them, mix tight and loose, you know, your choice. But this works great for that dimension and uh, a little bit bigger curl. So that, that's a favorite of mine. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna rouge the hair. So you're gonna come in and you're gonna take a section and you're gonna rouge it with your hands. Let me get this a little bit here. There you go. So you're gonna take a section and we're gonna rouge it and you're gonna hang on to the curl, right? And then you're just gonna rouge it up. And that's gonna make it the hair bigger. Okay, so take the section of the hair and then rouge it a little bit bigger. And it gives, it gives such a good look. 
I'll be taking this all down for her later. <laughs> she has nothing to worry about. <laughs> but these are these are great for uh, a textured look. This is great um, for, like I said, for an editorial shoot. Something fun to make the braids look a little bit, um, you know, have a little more notice to them, a little more detailed. But you see how this, uh, her hair is, it's getting fuller. It's getting more organic. And it's all about being organic and being nat natural and, and having the texture and having that smoothness added to uh, the texture and bringing up, combining them both together. I mean, I know this seems like such probably a elementary question, yes. but any tips for that rouging technique um, as far as like how much tension you're using, those kinds of things? Yeah, so when I'm rouging, I'm hanging on to her her strand and I, I have it a little bit like not too tight, but but I'd probably say a little bit tight, you know, because you don't want to rouge and it fall out of your hand, right? So hold it with a little tension. Okay, hold it with some tension. Then you're gonna take your two fingers and then you're just gonna, while you're hanging onto the hair, two section, two fingers on the, um, on the strand and then you are, you're gonna push that forward. So yes, so hang on to your section with a little bit more tension. So let's do it again. Let's hang on to my section with some tension, two fingers and then pull up. You can also, if you wanted to use a comb, you could also use a white tooth comb, and that way you can also rouge that up with the comb as well to have it a little bit bigger. The white tooth combs are really great because you're gonna get more, because it has such wide teeth, you know, you're gonna get that, that push. So you see how it's exploding it? So you can use a comb, but now you're getting more hair in that, in that section. But if I wanted them individually, then I would take the section and pin the pieces that I want to be bigger. Okay, so I'm holding it taunt, pushing it down, and rooting out that the bigger section. You know, and some people might say, I don't, I don't like that rouging. It makes it look messy. And that's fine. I can keep it curly. But for the look that I want, I want the texture. You know, I want it to be big. I want it to look full. You know, and it's just giving you a different look. You see how big it got? Look. Yeah. So then, you know, I'm going to do one right back here too. Because I want to have a little balance. Evie, um, Kelsey's asking a question that, you know, when when we do this kind of work, we, we hear pretty often, doesn't, doesn't this tangle the hair? It'll tangle the hair, right? But I'm look. I'm, we're doing it for uh, for a day, um, or we're looking for. It's either going to be for a shoot, or it's going to be for the night. But then, when I want to take all of this out, I'm just going to go in. Like I said, this is a tear sheet um, white tooth comb. I'm going to go in and I'm going to just brush it out and comb it because it's white teeth. You always want to make sure you have white teeth, and I'm just going to brush it out and comb it out. And that way I can then just pull out the cord and then pull out um, my crystal tack and then unbraid it. And then here's the trick with curly hair. When you're shampooing, um, put conditioner, wet her hair down, put some conditioner in her hair, open all the, the tangles up and then rinse it and then go ahead and shampoo. And by you putting the conditioner first, um, and actually you could just put the conditioner in the hair and then add the shampoo to it. And that way you got a very, very moisturizing shampoo. And that way, uh, then you can separate everything and then rinse it out. And it's so much easier, you know, to get out. Would you agree, Erica? Yeah. 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 I'll let her look at you and tell you. <laughs> it helps. So I've been helping her <laughs> with her hair. <laughs> and she's like, ah, <laughs> you know, but it does help. And even when you're shampooing. You know, when you're shampooing curly hair, you don't want to be vigorous when you shampoo. You just want to like emulsify it going back deep, you know, um, firm, but coming back. So that way you don't tangle everything up in the top of her head. Okay. But that is a trick to shampooing as well. Mm -hmm. So my whole family has curly hair, so I'm teaching them all. <laughs> and they're learning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
What do you think? Yeah. So see, all that texture, the bigger, and I, like I said, I could add curls in there. I could soften it up if I want, but I don't wanna. <laughs> I want it like this. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna bring her to the front. And we're gonna add, we're gonna actually lay down her, um, her edge on the side. So we're gonna put in, this is, um, this is a little edge cream from Mazzani. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that right now. And I'm just like taking a little bit right off my nail there. And I'm gonna just get a little closer so you guys can see. And I'm just gonna add it to her hair here, right on her baby hairs, okay? You could use hardware gel from Redken, okay? Or you could use, like I said, uh, this Mazzotti edging cream. And if you open it, this is what it looks like. And you just use it, put a little bit on your, your nail or your finger, and then, uh, you know, slide it through here. And it depends on, you know, do you want a harder feel? Do you want a softer feel? This one's a little bit softer, but I, I sometimes use um, the Redken hardware gel because it's a little firmer and it lasts a little longer. Okay, so apply it right on her edge. And then I'm gonna take Sam's comb and I'm gonna bring it forward a little and then back. Okay, so forward and back. And then sometimes too, you might wanna mist it, you know, because if it starts drying, I don't want to take her makeup off. <laughs> she will be mad. <laughs> All this work. All right. <laughs> so again, bring it forward and then push back. So it's like a finger wave, you know, forward and then back. And then just right adding it right into there. Okay. Um, I also have my tear sheet um, edging brush too. And sometimes I'll use that and change it up. And you'll bring it forward and then back. Okay, so brush it down, forward, push back, put your finger on it because you want it to lay down. Okay, so whether you use um, your brush or whether you use your comb, again, forward and then back and then lay it down. And you just got to have enough on there so that way it lays really well. So is it going to be like shiny? Yes, yes, it's going to be shiny. And if you don't want it to be shiny like that, then you're going to um, have to get something that's a little bit more matte, you know, but it'll dry and it won't, it won't be as shiny, but you're still going to have that shine to it. Okay. But then we have that looseness here, but that way her little, her curls right on her sides, they won't be popping up. Okay. But if you had a gel, that's going to be a harder hold. Make sense? Cool. Yeah. Eddie, there's a comment that um, I think it's Terenzio uh, uh -huh. just said it. My wife has fine hair and now wants what you just created. Laugh out loud, extensions. <laughs> um, oh, but great point. Any tips for doing this kind of braiding on finer hair? Because, yeah, it tends to get a little skinny on us, right? Yeah. So I would do definitely extensions. You know, I would add some extensions and what you could do is um, within her hair, you'll have to play with it. So how you could secure them in there. It might be, don't put them way at the top, but maybe like in the middle area and start her braiding. Don't start the braiding way at the top where I started Erica's hair. Like I started hers like right at the top. Um, come back a little bit farther. So that way when you add the extension, so it's not so skinny and you don't see the extensions through the top. So start kind of like, maybe like a uh, inch or two back and then start adding the extension in there so that way you can braid it and add to it. You know, so she would have a little bit more because with finer hair, you know, if you're, it's gonna be skinnier. Um, also, I would do, instead of this Dutch braid on the top, um, I would do the French braid where it's flat and that way you can kind of rouge it out because if you do it this way, you're gonna see a skinny braid. So go ahead and make it, do the French braid so it's flat underneath and that way you can just fan it out and it'd be bigger. Mm -hmm. So that would be a really good look for her. And then you can tag me and I want to see it. <laughs> but I love that. So now 
Let's see where we're at. Um, what we want to do too is like, um, so we have our edging, we have our braids. Now I want to add a little bit more pizzazz to her look. And what I did is I bought these clips. So I want you to see. So, <laughs> and what they look like is this. Um, see? And it's just like a little circle. And what I did, and it's just a little circle, but what we did is we opened them up. So that way they're wide. Can you see that? So they're wider right in that area here. So I put Erica to work and I had her open them up. <laughs> As she does. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do is now we're going to clamp them on her braid. I could clamp them on all three braids. I could do it right down the middle. Whatever I want, whatever you want, you could do. So we're going to clamp them right on the top. So you see it's wider, right? And then I'm just squishing it right on top of her braid. And, and they're so easy to squish, they're so soft, so you can make them really, really tight. Okay, so we're just bringing them all the way down. If you wanna keep some space on them, you could keep space. If you wanted to have them all the way down, bring them all the way down. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, oh, thank you. So see how you're, now I'm adding even more. So not only do I have the cord in the back, but now I got something fun in her front. And then you see how I actually also had her wear her earrings that were silver, so that way she could add to it. Okay, so we're just adding that. You see how we're adding the, the clips right to her braid. Okay. And as the, we get to the back, I'm going to spin her around because the back of the braid, of course, the thicker the hair is in the back, correct? Right? So then you're going to open it up a little bit wider so I can just get around that braid. Okay. And I'm going to have her, Erica put her head back a little bit. And I'm going to open it up a little bit wider. And we're going to secure that back there. So I love doing this, this is so much fun, so much fun. And there's so many colors, like you could do so many colors with this. There's, like I've seen a lot of golds and silvers and now there's a rose gold and there's, there's really big clips and uh, you just gotta do it and have fun with it. But I love it. So see how you make something simple into something Awesome. <laughs> and then you get a great model that works with you well. And it makes it even nicer. <laughs> Is there any questions going on right now? You guys feeling good? Looking beautiful. Lots of comments on how much they're enjoying this and how much uh, lots of comments also how much uh, learning has happened within such a short amount of time too. Good, good. I love this. Uh, that's a good question from Barbara. I'm asking uh, what about extra cost for uh, adding these kinds of pieces into the hair? You know what? I would definitely put a price on it and add to it because then they can take this home and they can have it. Um, so I would figure out like how much did it cost you to get all of this? Um, and then from there, I would, you know, add something to it, you know, and, and then I would charge them for it. And that way they can have it. And when they come back to see you, um, you know, they could also either bring it or if they wanted something new, they could, it, you could add something new to them. But yeah, definitely, I would definitely charge extra for it. Um, so that way they could, because you're, you're taking the time to go get it and you're investing. So I think it's great that you add to it. Mm -hmm. Especially if you add extensions too. Where did you, uh, someone's asking, where did you find the clips? You can get them on Amazon. Um, 
And you can look up clips on Amazon. Um, and they have so many different times, different types. They have like little hooks as well, um, like little circle hooks. They have all these different looks that you could get. And then sometimes you could go to your, um, like a Michaels. Like a Michaels, yeah, your Michaels. And they have a lot of this, these little things too that you could, um, you could get because they, they do they have there's a section where they have a lot of little what would you call them like like clips like this yeah yeah and you can play around with that yeah tons of different like accessories and stuff like that i love michael's <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> she does <laughs> so it, it works out so good so we get a, we find all these little things and then i just i just get them and and hang on like look i just like fill up my little bag this was from amazon you know, and then I could use all different kinds of whatever I want, you know. Um, I also have a bag that it has, you know, I got cords, I have yarn, I have a whole suitcase of stuff that I have actually. And then these are like little hair bands, you know, that you could just clip on the hair and you could just tie those on. And at first I was gonna do this to this top, but then they're too big. So, I mean, I could play with them here. I could move them around and do so many different things with them. So it's it's fun. Just ha You just have fun. Check out Michael's. Get some things there. Look on Amazon. Look up clips, and you'll find a lot of looks there. Okay? Um, yeah, so let's go back. Really take a look. What do you think? All right, all right, all right. Did I hit everything? Um, and what I want to say is, so let's just, uh, recap on everything I did. So what I did was, um, I braided, I sectioned her sections out in three sections and then I braided her middle area first and I braided the middle first to separate the two. So that way the hair doesn't go back to my middle and it's, it's separated. So I had her hold them or you could clip them away, but I braided the middle first. Then I braided my next side and my right side, okay? Then we went in with um, my crystal tech and wrapped it around the end of the ponytail so that way that secured it without messing up her back of her hair. Then I went ahead and um, I wrapped the cord around the hair and far down, but again, you choose. You want it closer, you want it farther, do you want it thicker, your choice. Then we went in with Sam's um, Vision Blow Dryer and we diffused it. So that way you get um, you get all that lift and volume. Remembering not to touch so much versus just putting it inside, you know, the bowl. So that way you create most volume. And remembering that the frizz, the texture is because I made it like that versus it just becoming like that. Um, diffusing it, then taking your section, holding it taut, rouging it. And then curling it, you know, with your smaller curling iron or your wand so you can get a little added curl to it, okay? And we came in the front, then we, we uh, did our little edges and laid them down because she has her curls, so we laid them down. And then we went ahead with the clips and then just accessorized it to make it a little bit more fun. And then there she goes, what do you think? It looks so awesome. <laughs> I know I had a ton of takeaways just and, uh, you know, thank you again for doing something that was very approachable. Because yeah. this, to me, especially as someone that doesn't do a lot of styling, I'm like, I could actually probably pull this off, you know? Like, it, it was very approachable, very salon-friendly. And, and, you know, I think people really appreciate that rather than coming in and um, kind of, don't want to necessarily call it showing off, but doing things mm -hmm. that we're never going to get to do in a real salon situation. Right, right. And I love it because, like we said, you were saying, like, it's three braids, right? But you made them three braids into something bigger. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's what I love about it. It, it. You can dress it up how you want. Like we said, it's a plain, simple black dress, but it's you made it more by your accessorizing everything that you just did. So Absolutely. you create, you have fun, you know, enjoy. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you for making it into a family affair. Thank you, Erica, for oh, yeah. hanging out with us the hour you were such a great <laughs> wonderful you, spirit you. and model for us i try, I try. <laughs> thank you awesome. all right evie and thank you so very much let's give evie lots of love in the chats please and um please uh stay in the green room evie so we can catch up after the show and thank you so much for joining us
Thank you so much. You guys have a good day. Have fun. Happy hair day.